What's up, Fort Worth fam? It's the kid, Big Boss Fable here. We back with another video, man. And today we are doing a um, how to see germ spread coronavirus reaction, man. It dropped on Mark Rober's channel yesterday, man. And I saw it going up. I didn't really uh, do a reaction to it yesterday, but like you see, I'm doing to I'm doing a reaction to it today. So the video's got over five million views. It's the number two trending video on YouTube, over 300K likes, man. I'm not familiar with Mark Rober, but this is a very interesting video if he has it down to the science and he actually knows, you know, the technological aspects or the technical aspects in terms of how diseases spread. I saw he had a blue light on, like a little black light, whatever it's called. So I'm not sure how he's gonna factor that into the video, but be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the video. Comment section below after you subscribe, man. Hit the notification bell so you're notified of when I'm posting at all times. And right here, man, right here, follow me at Fort Worth Fabian on IG. So let's get it. I always thought if we could somehow just see the germs around us, everyone would be a lot more careful and we'd get sick way less. Unfortunately, that's still not possible. So I did the next best thing by running a day-long experiment in this third grade classroom. I found this powder called Glow Germ, and just like real germs, when it's on your hands, you can't see it. But unlike real germs, if you turn a black light on, it becomes visible. But it transfers to things you've touched, so it provides a really good way to visualize exactly how germs spread. So before the kids arrived, as a control, I went around and noted any pre-existing spots in the room that fluoresced under the black light, and then it was go time. The kids, of course, had no idea what we were doing, and that the teacher had been secretly infected with the glowing powder. So she randomly shook the hands of three kids, but didn't touch any of the rest. And so with that, they just went about their normal day. At break, I did choose one random student, and he agreed to let me put some of the powder on his hands, too. And then two hours later at lunchtime, I checked the results. Remember, everything you see here started with just the teacher and one student having a little of that powder on their hands. And because my flashlight can only illuminate one spot at a time, I used Photoshop to better visualize our observations oh. of where germs were left behind, including on the other kids. Uh -oh. We all know what's true or fake at this point. You Photoshop it, boy. Oh, and they were actually pretty diligent about washing their hands. This was the desk of the kid that was infected. And what's crazy is that germs could live on a hard surface like this for up to nine days. And so you can see how important it is to disinfect the things a sick person regularly touches. For example, this was the phone of the teacher in the experiment. Even if you wash your hands really often, if you immediately pull out your phone, a lot of those germs just go right back on your hands. Think about when the last time was that you cleaned your phone. My friend Joanne at the Wall Street Journal recently demonstrated you can clean your phone with an antibacterial wipe every day for at least a year and it doesn't affect the oleophobic coating at all. And this hopefully gives you a better mental model of why it's really important to wash your hands or use hand sanitizer after being at places like this or this or this or this. Cleaning commonly touched surfaces is important because even if a virus is spread through airborne transmission, those tiny droplets don't stay point. in the air for long. Then they land on surfaces waiting to be touched by our hands. Which raises an important point. The ultimate defense against catching a virus is just don't touch your face. Your eyes, nose, and mouth are like the single weak spot on the Death Star when it comes to viruses. That's the only way they can get in to infect you. But as you can see here, not touching your face is easier said than done. And before you think, yeah, well, that's Dang. just kids for you, this was what the teacher's face looked like at the end of the day, and she said she tried extra hard to remember not to touch her face. I found this result fascinating, so I put the powder on my own hands for a few hours, and I resisted the urge to touch my face so many times that I fully expected I was going to have a perfectly clean face and the moral high ground. And then this is what I saw. <laughs> what the heck? I genuinely have no idea when any of this came on. Until I reviewed the footage. Oh, well, there you go. On average, we touch our face 16 <laughs> times an hour, which is why washing hands is so important. It's impossible Damn. to catch a virus directly through your hands. It's as futile as shooting the outer surface of the Death Star. The problem is we use our hands to help the virus out by constantly giving it a ride to our figurative Death Star exhaust ports. Facts, I ain't gonna lie, I be touching my face a lot, bro. 
and I don't even realize Because it. of this, I ran another experiment with some of the kids after lunch. First, I had them put some lotion on their hands that also glows under a black light. But then I told them I made a mistake and used the wrong lotion. Can you guys just wash, go wash your hands real quick. And do a good washing, right? Yeah, do the right washing, okay? I just tricked you guys again. Because what I really wanted to do is test how good you are at washing your hands. So guess what I'm going to do now? Show me your hands. But before I show you how effective they actually were at washing their hands, here's what you should quickly know about viruses. They're super tiny, but also the most abundant biological entity on the planet. In fact, there's over 10 million viruses in any single drop of seawater. And a lot of types of viruses are beneficial to the planet's ecosystem, and only an insanely tiny percentage affect humans at all. And they're really simple. Viruses are basically a shell with some DNA inside, and they just want to spread and duplicate. That's their only goal. But they're so simple that they need a host to do that. So they reproduce by infecting their host cells and then trick them to become factories that just make more exact copies of the virus. When you get sick and then cough or sneeze or wipe your nose and then touch a surface, you're putting copies of this virus out to find other hosts and just repeat the process. And so here's what the kids' hands look like after washing their hands. Uh-oh, look at the backs. Let me see your fingernails. Oh, look at all those germs. Oh, your thumb. Oh, my hand. Oh, look at your wrist. Look at your wrist. We all sort of have a habitual way of washing our hands. So once again, I tried this myself using the typical quick way I do it in my muscle memory. Granted, that's better than nothing, but you can see the difference compared Double to soap. when I was deliberate Double and soap. took 20 seconds. Which is why it helps to do things like sing the happy Not birthday me. song twice, or you could do what I do and follow Brandon Flowers' example. Jealousy, turning saints to eager eyes, cause I'm Mr. Brightside. And then for a final experiment, I wanted to show how watch. dumb handshaking is, so I infected the first kid with the powder and then had them do a handshake chain down the line. The fifth person here... Hey, get closer. Slow, nigga. I mean, he ain't capping, man. When it comes to all this, like, touching your face, not realizing it, people not washing their hands long enough, a lot of that comes into play, man. People don't even realize it. But um, let's get back to the video ad had popped up still had significant traces on their hand so i put him at the first and lined four more kids up after him and three of their hands glowed so we got trace germs from the original person all the way down eight handshakes later so if you ever meet me in real life please don't be offended if in lieu of a handshake i offer you a fist bump and a selfie in conclusion what does this all mean with regards to the coronavirus covid19 you should be concerned to take this seriously but regardless of what you see in the coming weeks there's absolutely no need to panic as i'm sure you've heard of bunch by now our goal is to flatten the curve so that reported cases stay just under the capacity of the healthcare system and social distancing is the best knob that we can turn to affect that the reason this helps should hopefully make more sense after watching this video especially for those who have been doubting the science and feeling like this is an extreme reaction and my take here is i'm a practical kind of optimist is. the upside is while this virus is bad it could be way worse and this gives us a chance as a global community to get some systems and methods in place to handle something potentially even more drastic in the future. Also, maybe it will lead to changing some social norms, like replacing handshakes with fist bumps, or when people are really sick, thinking it's okay to mingle about and go to work. Globally, the normal flu kills anywhere from a quarter to a half a million people a year, due in large part to people not practicing good germ hygiene. So if this experience makes people more socially aware of the right precautions to take when they get sick, that will save countless lives for years to come, Blow long you know. after this coronavirus is old news. And make no mistake, this is going to be rough for some more than others but history has shown that us humans are pretty resilient these types of things can bring out the worst in us resilient. but they can also bring out the best most wholesome parts of us like these italians practicing their social distancing with an impromptu balcony concert how we feel about the situation is largely dependent on just which part we choose to focus on. For me, that means being grateful to the heroes in our healthcare system, or the school lunch ladies still providing free lunch for kids who depend on them, or the scientists all over the world who are working tirelessly seven days a week to create better testing methods and a vaccine. This is going to be a bumpy ride for us, but the economy will eventually bounce back as it always does, and we'll be better off as a global community for having gone through this. Again, take this seriously, but there's absolutely no need to panic. Uh, we totally got this. While I just so happened to be filming at their school, the principal came over to the PA to make an announcement. Because of this virus, we are going to be closing school 
for three weeks. That kid at the end is just an opportunist. In fact, a common thread you'll see with successful people is they treat their trials and challenges as opportunities for growth. And while these are difficult times, now that our schedules have been totally Facts. cleared, we have potentially a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to invest in so ourselves. Much. And there's no better way to do this than by joining the online learning community at Skillshare, who also happen to be supporting this video. If you don't know, Skillshare offers easy-to-follow premium classes with no ads taught by the experts. And they range from guy, learning you don't need like I use now. for my builds it, to baking 101 to graphic design to learning to paint you know we gonna stop there because it looks like he's trying to promote something to me now and get some cake up off of whoever sponsoring that ad or promotion he's got in this video but anyways he made a lot of good points man I ain't gonna lie like I mess with the video and it's funny seeing the kid at the end you know he said Fortnite, you know and he's right people can take these times to look at it, at it as opportunity invest in yourself and invest in what you're doing man me I'm doing more YouTube, man. You know what I'm saying? You saw I posted like eight videos yesterday. I'm going to keep going. Probably another eight today, another eight, another eight, another eight for the whole month. You know what I'm saying? So I got to keep rolling, man. But I, I really appreciated this video. You know, a little, um, little uh, 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 social tester, whatever they call them, bro. But this is a cool, cool video. Shout out to Mark Rober. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, stay safe out there. Stay sanitized. Wash your hands for 20 seconds. Don't shake hands. Blow your nose and throw away the tissue. Don't touch surfaces. Stop touching your face. And you may survive. I'm just playing. You know, God bless everybody. Take it easy out here. We out.